So if you turn your yellow ring on, you can see all sorts of stuff going on here. All this is going to be moving parts on the mechanism. And if you open your new map, you see you got a left and a right. And that's just basically going to turn all the inner gear works either one way or the other. So that being said, let's get to work on our first divine or on our uh, final divine beast here. So to really get anywhere, you can see you really can't do too much. Everything's kind of at a standstill. So what we're going to do is come back out here to the middle part, and I just kind of want to give you guys a good bird's eye view of what's going to happen here. So you turn your Divine Beast controls one way, and you see all the gear mechanisms turning one way, and you go the other way, and everything goes back the other direction. Alright, so enough of the overview, let's get to work. So I'm going to start out with the first open doorway, and if you can see my yellow arrow on the map, we're basically up in the front part to the right. And nothing's turning. Everything's standing still. So to get the ball rolling in here, we're going to have to engage a metal clamp, so to speak. It's going to be right above the doorway here. So just kind of keep pushing that thing toward the wall here, and it'll eventually lock in place and engage this big wheel. Now, as soon as it happens, your doorway is going to go away. That's okay. It'll be back around here in just a second. All right. So, in here, you see we got a couple more metal clamps. What we're going to do to get up there is uh, you see a treasure chest rotating around, too. So, we're going to actually need to get this thing spinning the proper direction. Just going to take the right up here, open up our treasure chest. Now, all the treasure chests in the Divine Beast are going to be the early game garbage. But the only good thing about it is for you picture takers out there, you might be missing some of this stuff. So, let's see what I'm going to sacrifice here. I guess that's gone. I'm just really doing that to keep the treasure chest cleared for my uh, treasure chest hunter on my Sheikah Slate. Alright, so you got a staircase up here. Get up here however you decide to do it. Um, I just kind of did some fancy footwork there to jump up here. But in either case, here we are. So what we're going to do is get these two metal pieces going in our favor here. So however you want to do it, move that first metal piece all the way out to the end of wherever it'll stop at on its own. And then the other metal piece is going to be way up here on the roof. And what we're going to do is pull that bad boy out from its holding place. Just let it fall to the floor. Pick it up. And we're going to get it stuck into this doohickey here. And that'll get this entire mechanism turning for you. Now. <clears throat> excuse me. Jump down to the bottom and you're going to have your first terminal to activate coming within range really doesn't matter whether you're going clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, both directions, it'll kind of spin around to the bottom, and you'll be able to activate said terminal and disengage number one of four locks. Uh, I missed it. All right. All right, so you're going to have three Guardians out here now. And I just like to do my mid-air archery. For those of you that follow along with my walkthroughs, you know this is my favorite, the bread and butter of my success. All righty, so we're going to go ahead and get into the second part now, the other side of where we just came out of and you can see the mechanism turning here we needed to go the other way so we can get onto the moving gear here and this will get us up into the air a bit 
And we're just going to jump onto this little walkway. And we got a gauntlet of fire is what I'll call this one. And it looks like this thing's spinning the wrong way, so let's get it back the other direction. There is a treasure chest in here. It's actually up on top of this little room. We'll get to that here in a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess I got the winter crud going on at the moment. <coughs> ah! Blah! Alright. So just wait for the fire to go away so you can proceed forward. Activate your switch and you'll see a ball will roll out. So obviously we need to wait for the opportune moment here. We got that bad boy rolling back the other way. Time that right. Oh, nuts. I didn't stay on the switch like a meatball there. Alright, let's try that again, shall we? Right about there. What am I doing? I'm walking too far forward is what I'm doing. There we go. So anyway, get the ball to roll into that funnel deal. And what we're going to do is we're going to need to get that around to the top. And it's going to be a back and forth game with that ball. So as soon as the ball gets rolling downward, go ahead and switch back the other direction. And we're going to have to do that again. We'll have to get way up to the top. And it'll eventually start rolling downward. And as soon as that begins to happen once again, swap back the other direction. And that will eventually cause the ball to fall out. I guess we don't need to stay on the switch. To fall out to the center for you to pick up. And easy peasy, all we really got to do is set the orb into this little ramp here. That will get itself going. Ball should kind of work itself into the hole there, and the door will open so that you may access terminal number two. And disengage lock number two of four. All right. So, before we leave this little room, or cylindrical hallway, whatever you want to call it, go ahead and jump in the doorway, and we're going to ride this as an elevator. Uh, kind of like we did in the Divine Beast in the desert. Uh, Va Naboris. That great big wall, rotating wall, whatever you want to call it. Just stand in the doorway. We're going to take it up, up, up. And we are going to fly across to our treasure chest. Now another cool thing about this Divine Beast and the treasure chests is in getting these early game weapons, the Cobble Crusher, the Gerudo Scimitar, these are the weapons that you would take back to, uh, I don't know, the, the, I'll just call them the blacksmiths in the corresponding cities, you know, Zora's Domain, uh, Gerudo Town, all those. And this is how you would take a diamond and these particular weapons and flint to the blacksmith and you would get that weapon recreated for you in case you lost it or broke it or whatever okay so as I previously mentioned we're gonna have some guardian trouble every time we activated new terminal and on the second one you're gonna have a turret guardian to deal with so it's always best to jump down and deal with that thing so, next we're going to jump back on the gear mechanism in the center of the Divine Beast here. We're going to take that bad boy all the way up to the top. There's going to be a couple of treasure chests to access in here. So, do keep in mind the center shaft here is also rotating. Don't stand up here too long. 
you can see a treasure chest right behind the spinny thingy. And what I'm going to do is just try to time that so that the opening is right in front of the treasure chest. And that should work. Come on, Link. There you go. And it's a shield. So this is how you would get a new daybreaker if you lost your daybreaker shield. Or if you're like me and you just don't care to have one, this is a chance to get it back if you so desire. <clears throat> so you take that to Gerudo Town and get a new one made with some diamond and flint. Alright folks, so that chest is cleared. And I do believe there's... let me get my bearings here. Okay, not on this side, it's on the back side of the room. So just simply walk across this big giant shaft here in the middle. You're going to have another guardian to deal with. Yeah, I really don't want to toast these really good weapons I have on a... Ouch. Come on. Come on. I got tired of waiting. Alright, so there you have it. Get rid of him. And we'll be underway. So let's see, I'm trying to find the mechanism with a couple other treasure chests hiding for us. I think I just found it. Actually, I think it was back that way. Yeah, okay. Now that I know where I'm at and what I'm doing here. So, on this platform, you've got two ways you can go. And I guess I'm going to start out with this way first. Okay, we're going to have to move a metal, a couple of metal shafts actually. So you're going to have a treasure chest and it's going to be just within range of Magnesis on this side. Go ahead and pull that bad boy over to you. Alright, we're going to have a big metal deal, just like that last room we were in. We're going to have to get that kind of stuck in position. Alright there, and it should, you'll, you should hear like a lock, a locking sound. And then go, go ahead and pull that metal shaft over, and it should fit in there just like a sleeve and get this entire uh, gear system working for you. Alright, so from here what I'm going to do is actually jump into the doorway. So I'm just going to take a little leap down here. And once again I'm going to use this like an elevator. Because there's yet another treasure chest right above me. So don't go into the room just yet. Let's go ahead and get yourself situated on the door, on the door frame. Now we're going to take said door frame all the way up as high as it'll let us go. And you got to be quick on the footwork here. Fancy footwork once again. We're going to jump onto this moving gear right in front of Link. So you got to be really quick on the draw here. Come on, Link. There you go. And take that bad boy all the way up. And to your next treasure chest. Booyah! Diamond, baby. Alright, so just go ahead and jump back in. You don't have to do any more fancy footwork at this point. And just simply wait for a door to come back around. Alright, you see we got a gigantic turbine spinning here. And you guessed it, that has to do with your wheels out here. But, for now, it doesn't really matter which way it's spinning. Just go ahead and use stasis and stop that giant turbine from spinning. And we got another guardian to deal with here. And treasure chest. 
So this is what you would take to the Rito Village blacksmith and get a new Great Eagle bow if you broke or lost yours. And I'm just going to go ahead and clear the chest for now. I'm not actually going to keep that bow. You can actually find a couple of those around the Rito Village area anyway, so it's not like you really have to take this one back if you really don't want to. Alrighty, so go ahead and stop the big turbine once again. With your stasis. And simply walk up top side of this ladder. And we are going to spin the wind in our favor. And we got yet another ladder to climb up. And once again, spin turbine in the opposite direction in our favor. Jump onto moving platform. And should be the last time with stasis here. We will be stopping the fan blade, turbine, whatever you want to call that thing. It looks like I got a crappy stop there, but I was still able to make it through. Okay, so that's terminal number three, disengaging lock number three. Okay, so that was the, I don't know if you're looking at it this way, that was the left rear tunnel, whatever you want to call it. Or as I like to call it, the wind tunnel. Okay, so for easy travel, we're just going to take this all the way top side. Actually, you really don't have to do that. There is a ladder and a platform. We'll just do it that way. Okay, so now there's going to be some more guardian trouble to deal with because we just got another... And if he's not targeting you, just whistle and that should get his attention for you. Oh, I don't do that. Uh, there's a giant ancient core down there. I gotta go get it. No big deal. Getting back up doesn't take that long. It was worth it. Alright, so if you're having trouble with that thing, just go ahead and, you know, jump and fly, and you can take out that bow and arrow midair and get a better eye shot in. You know, the game will slow way down for you so you can target in better. So that's another way to do it. I just usually stand there and aim and get my shot in. But if you're having issues, that's another way. Alright, so now we're going to head out to the other side here. And first things first, we're going to have to get this uh, platform up with the chains being held. So all you got to do is use stasis. Get that thing locked in place so it gets this thing spinning. And as you can see, this thing will eventually get its way all to the way... Oh, nuts. I wasn't quick enough. Oh, that's what I get for yapping. Instead of paying attention on the game here. Jeez. Pretty cool Divine Beast, I might say. I was kind of expecting a little more out of this DLC. Because it seemed like the first DLC, we got a lot out of that. The second one was just more movies and music and all that. But, I'll take what I can get, of course. Alright, so I'm not going to wait around this time and talk. I'm just going to get going, get moving, and get into the next spot here. As you can see, once you're in here, things will keep on spinning for you. And you can see a gigantic clamp down there. So all you really got to do is use your ice block rune. Oops, I missed. Or a cryonis. 
you gotta get that thing under the piston down there and that will raise that clamp and it will get this entire mechanism spinning for you now you can take it either way you can either rotate this way jump on and fly over to that platform or you can do it the way I like to do it and get it spinning I guess that's clockwise if you're facing the back of the room anyway <clears throat> And this thing will just go ahead and elevate you in to the next space here. Alright, so we gotta get the water shut off. Once again, we're gonna have a little puzzle here. So all we really have to do, stasis. Let's see if I have a burner weapon. I don't think I... Yeah, I got that cobble crusher. And it shouldn't take too much, just... Get a few swats in and it'll get spinning and it'll shut all the water spigots off and the water level will lower and you'll be able to access what should be the last treasure chest in the divine beast here so you would take that back to zora's domain and you could get the tridents from that blacksmith Ceremonial trident or light lightsaber trident or whatever. I'm so bad with names. All right, so I'll go back out to the center room here, and I don't see any more beeping on my Ashika slate, which means I definitely got all the treasure chests. Hooray! All right, so in order to get up there, we're gonna have to turn the water back on. So set, uh, step on switch here. You're gonna see a big metal ball and a big piston shaft shooter thingy. I don't know what you want to call that, but simply uh, pull that thing up with magnesis. Get it into position. Step on said switch. And it will get that thing turning again to turn the water back on. You need the water to be back on. Alrighty. So once the water's back on, water level will go up. And you can access terminal number four. Final terminal. Alrighty. That gate should open up for you so you can get back out of here nice and easy. And I don't remember if there's going to be guardian trouble out here this time. I think we're done with that jazz. Yeah, it looks like we are. All right, so simply go to the front of the room here. Or back of the room, however you look at the map. I guess that is going to be the front, or what I've been calling the front. Actually, this is what I've been calling the back. I get turned around in here. Doesn't really matter. Either way, we're looking for this great big metal round thingamajig. Simply pull that forward and just kind of keep pushing it into the wall there. And eventually it'll get locked into place and start spinning this entire mechanism. And door shall open. Alright, for you picture takers out there, you cannot take a picture of the final enemy yet. You have to wait until you actually start fighting him. But long story short, we're gonna go open up the thingy and that will initiate the final battle. And don't worry, you're gonna have access to all your weaponry, all your meals, all your fun stuff when we get in here. And that's when you'll be able to take your picture of the dude we're gonna have to fight here. Now, he's going to change attack patterns, I think, three times. You get him down about a third of the way dead, he'll change. About another third of the way dead, he'll change again. And each time I'll kind of walk you through 
as we go. Cool tunes. All right, for you picture takers out there, now's the time so you don't forget. Otherwise, you'll get wrapped up in the moment and you'll forget your picture. So break that camera out ASAP. Get your picture. I'm not going to deal with it. I just kind of wanted to point that out. Crap, I didn't mean to waste one of my... All right, so any big fist fight, arm up, suit up, and eat up. I like my Savage Lionel bow for this fight. Extra hearts, and of course, attack power. Now, if memory serves, I rather enjoyed my ancient proficiency in here. That's giving you an 80% attack power boost already. And then the attack power meal you ate is giving you an additional 50% on the combined total of the first two. So any guardian or ancient based weapon will do that. So that's the way I'm going to go here. Alright, so what I like to do is just kind of do the perfect dodge. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, not that. Alright, well, I'm gonna get tired of waiting here. 